A lot of multiple choice questions on exams deal with your ability to think through this formula and tell if a reaction is spontaneous or not. Okay, so if somebody says to you, you got a delta H value that's positive and your delta S value is positive, is your reaction spontaneous? Okay, look at it, break it down. If this is positive and this is positive, then that means then, remember, temperature always has to be a positive number. It can't be 0K or less, so it has to be above that. So this is always going to be positive. So, positive value here multiplied by this with a negative in front means this is going to be a negative quantity and this is going to be positive. So, when the temperature is high, then this number here, or what this gets you, will be bigger than this here, and you will get a delta G that's negative. So, when the temperature is actually high, the T value is actually high here, you've got a spontaneous reaction. Well, what about when both of them are negative values? When the delta H is negative, and this is negative, negative times negative makes that positive. So, if this is going to be positive and this is going to be negative, if this is a bigger negative than this is, then the reaction is going to be spontaneous. That means that the temperature has to be low to make this a small positive value. And so when temperatures are low, this condition here will give you spontaneous. Now, what happens if your reaction is positive for delta H and negative for delta S? Negative here times T, which is a, and it's a negative value, makes that positive. Positive and positive can never give you a negative. So, this is going to be non-spontaneous when it's a positive here and a negative here. It doesn't matter what the temperature is. And last one, if this is a negative value and this is a positive delta S, the system has positive, has positive entropy, which means it's going random. And whatever the temperature is, it doesn't matter, because as long as it's exothermic and releasing energy, negative here and a positive here means the reaction is going to be spontaneous at any temperature. Recap. You know how to calculate delta H, don't you? If you were given any calorimetric data, you could go to the back of a book or a data booklet and you could look at the heats of formation table and the sum of the heats of formation of the products, like let's say XY, minus the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants, that will give you the delta H. Well, okay, you know this Hess's law type of equation here also works for if somebody says to you, well, what's the delta S of this? All you have to do is go and find the chart that actually has delta S values. And you know, any textbook has the delta H and the delta S values next to each other. And this holds true to calculate the delta S for a system. There are delta S or S values for each of the chemicals. Now you know that for, for calculating delta H, elements don't have a heat of formation, so they would be zeros. But you got to be careful. Don't take for granted that the S values for elements are zeros. They are not. Okay, and guess what else? This is going to be real convenient. Something's convenient. Somebody says, cut to the chase. Just tell me whether this is going to be a spontaneous reaction or not. Well, you can actually go and find that the delta G equals the delta G of the products minus the delta G of the reactants. So all three of those, S, G, and H, can be calculated for an equation with a table that has those values in it. One other thing that I wanted to mention. You know this formula, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If somebody says, I have substance X, which is a solid, and is turning into X liquid. What is the melting point for that? What's the temperature of the melting point? Well, you know what? If you know the delta G for that reaction, and you know the delta S and the delta H, you can manipulate to find the T. All you have to really know is this and this. How much is the free energy value at a phase change? A phase change is a point of equilibrium. And a delta G value at equilibrium is always zero. So that's how, what, the number that you always plug in at equilibrium at phase change for any reaction. Find its delta H, know that it, what its delta S is, probably through this method up here, and you can find the temperature at that phase change.